Well, we need to solve a system of equations by graphing, there are some common mistakes that students make. So in this video, that's exactly what I wanna cover, is the most common mistakes that I saw as a teacher, and sometimes I don't wanna admit it, but sometimes mistakes that I would make myself. Now, the first one is plainly obvious, because remember when we're solving a system of equations, we're basically just looking for the intersection of two lines. So we need to make sure that we can graph our lines properly. So the first mistake would be not be graphing lines properly and using incorrect scaling. Okay, so I just listed out some very basic linear equations that students need to graph. But again, what happens all the time? Students kind of forget what they are doing or how to do this. So remember, when we're graphing a linear equation, ladies and gentlemen, we can think about everything in terms of y equals mx plus b, obviously, except for this one, right? So that's gonna be a special case, but we'll get to it and we will review it. Remember, m represents our slope. You can think about that as the rise over the run. That is going to be the change between any two points on your linear equation. b is gonna represent your y-intercept. Now, the first example that students make mistakes on is they forget when we have a negative. You can think about that as a negative three over two x. You could think about that as a three over a negative two x but you cannot think about that as a negative three over a negative two X, right? This negative needs to either go in the up or down or either in the numerator or in the denominator. Just don't put it in both. Because again, remember your rise over your runs. You know, if you're negative, you can either go down and to the right or you can go up and to the left, okay? So that's very, very important. That's a very big mistake students will make. The next one is when we're dealing with horizontal and vertical lines. When Y equals two, that means my Y value for all x values is going to equal two. So that is gonna represent a horizontal line. If you think about that in terms of your slope intercept form, my slope is going to be zero. So we're just dealing with our, my y intercept. On the flip side, if I have x equals one, that means for all values of y, x is always equal to one. So that is gonna represent a vertical line. And again, that would be when my slope is going to be undefined. So remember, when you're dealing with like a x equals one, that is just going to be a vertical line for whatever the x value is. And the last one is what happens when we have an integer as our slope. A lot of students like when our slope is a fraction because we know the rise over run and we can kind of figure things out unless we're making a mistake over here. But remember, when we have an integer, we can always rewrite an integer as a fraction. So I can rewrite this as three over one X plus one. So or again, my rise in this case would be three and my run would be one. So just make sure these are some common mistakes that students will make with some basic equations. And the other thing that comes into this I'm kind of grouping a lot of little mistakes all together, would be the scaling. And I make this mistake all the time, especially when I'm teaching and I'm talking, I'll do like a scale like this and then I'll do a big one and then I do a little one. And just make sure when you're trying to graph these and you're trying to find that intersection point, it's critically important that you create a good scale. So either use some graph paper or just make sure you are using very like detailed inter points and if you need to, draw nice little horizontal and vertical lines, because I can't tell you, there might be some videos on YouTube where I got the wrong intersection point just simply because I counted wrong and, I, and my scaling was off. So don't make that mistake, and I'll try to make sure I don't make that mistake on this video. Because the next one is actually solving a system of equations where students make the mistake. And this is actually a very common one. Okay. So students will get a problem like this and they say, all right, everything's positive. I got everything in slope intercept form. I'm not dealing with any of these kind of mistakes. Like I kind of got this, this one doesn't seem that bad, right? And the mistake that students will make is they always want to go positive and they will continue going positive until they can figure things out. Unfortunately, the intersection point of this solution guys is actually down and to the left. So let me try to do my best scaled version of this so you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about. So if I was to graph this, I'm gonna to go to my y intercept of four, right? And then I'm gonna go up two over one. And if I do that, I'm gonna have a line that looks like this. Then in this one, I have a y intercept of two, and then I'm gonna go up four over three. So one, two, three, four, and then over three is one, two, three. So four, three. And hopefully you guys can see that these graphs are not gonna intersect, but guess what? If you graph these like a little bit off, they might look like parallel lines or they might look like they're going to intersect. 
So it's critically important to have that correct scaling. So you can see, uh-oh, these are not actually gonna intersect as I go to the right. But students always want to start going to the right and they always want everything to assume because a lot of the easier examples that we teach with solving system of equations, a lot of times start with that positive solution point. But in this case, ladies and gentlemen, we need to do the negative version because up and to the right, we can also go down and to the left. So instead of going up four to the right three, I'm gonna go down four, one, one, two, three, four, and to the left three, one, two, three. So get that point, should be right there. And then let's go ahead and follow this one. Instead of going up to the right, I'm gonna go down to to left one, and then down to to left one. And again, you can see that my graph is not perfect, but we can see that this solution point, it is again where these two points are intersect, is going to be at negative three comma negative Two. All right, the last example is one that happens all the time, and that is going to be using the intercept method. Okay, and the reason why the intercept method doesn't make sense in this case is we're looking for the points that the graph is going to cross. And when we're first teaching linear equations, right, we teach the slope intercept form, that's a great way. But a lot of times when you have something where like you have a two X plus three I equals 12, the fastest, easiest way to graph that would just be finding the X and Y intercepts and then connecting them. So you can see in this example, if I was to do that, I set zero in for X and then solve for Y y would equal to a four, one, two, three, four. And then over here, I set y equal to zero and I get two x equals 12, solve for x, and then you can see x equals six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And then you're gonna get a line that's gonna look like this. And then if I go and graph this though, I go down to negative one and then go up one over one, up one over one, up one over one. And then Unfortunately though, a lot of times students are like, I'm not sure, like you might made a mistake. Like, I don't know, look at my scaling. Like my sc what point is that, right? So it's not very, very clear where exactly this intersection point is going to be. So when I'm solving a system of equations by graphing, I never want to use the intercept method because students will make a mistake guessing it to the left or to the right, especially if their scaling is going to be off. So what I would recommend doing is set it equal to Y, U slope intercept form. So to do that, I have a two X plus three Y equals 12. What I'm simply gonna do is get the two X to the other side and then divide by three. Okay, so in this example, I am going up four. So one, two, three, four. And then what I'm gonna do is go down two. So down two to the right three, one, two, three. So down two to the right three. And it looks like that's where that intersection point is actually going to be. You can see my scaling is not really good, right? So that coordinate point is one, two, three, up two. So that'd be three comma two. And let's just verify negative one. So over one, up one, over one, up one, over one, up one. That looks like it's good. So it looks like actually my graph, my scaling has been off. So the actual intersection point is going to be at three comma two. So be careful on that scaling guys. Be careful on using the intercept method. Be careful on always going to the right and positive and be careful with graphing your basic linear equations. Those are the three mistakes I see students make.